Thank you, team. Go ahead and take your handout and your Bibles. Find Hebrews chapter 1. We will get to Hebrews 1 eventually, okay? And I have... What are you all laughing about? We have some other passages that I want to look at it as we get there. Anybody remember the old uh, country western song that says, I got a long way to go and a short time to get there? That's this morning, okay? So I'll talk fast, you listen fast, and we'll work our way right through the passage. How many of you have ever experienced hearing loss? You don't hear nearly as well as, as you used to. How many of you wives are convinced that your husbands definitely have hearing loss? I certainly don't hear Sue like I used to hear her ask me to do certain things. Um, let me ask it a different way. How many of you are good listeners? Who in the room would say, I'm a good listener? Anybody? There's a couple that I'm really hoping, due to your professions, you're going, I'm a good listener, okay? Let, let me see it again. How many of you would say, I'm a good listener? All right, all right. How many of you would say, I'm a bad listener? So now I know. Now I know. How many of you, when someone is talking, you are already formulating the response and not really listening? No, no, no I say, Yes. <laughs> Yes, it's so fun to have this point of view where the wives or the spouses identify the weakness in the other one. It's really quite amazing to be up here. You should try it sometime. <laughs> There's something about hearing, isn't there? And when you start to lose hearing or have a loss of hearing, it impacts our life. Today and next week, I want to do just a two-part series a little bit on how we hear the voice of God. Today is more the skill, the art of listening, the art of learning how to hear. Next week, we'll talk more about the noise that's in our world that keeps us from hearing. But I have good news. I have, matter of fact, I have, I have great news. John chapter 10, verse 27 says this. My sheep, this is God speaking, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Can I, just, can I just tell you right at the very beginning, you can hear the voice of God today. You can hear it. You go, you know, I'm going to get this, this big, loud, audible voice today. Probably not. And I can tell you another truth. Nor do you need to have an audible voice today. You have something better we have something better than the audible voice of God. But I want you to underline it. I want you to write it down. I want you to pay attention to it. God still speaks today. Do I get a witness? God still speaks today. Now, I'm 57 years old. I know I don't look it, but I'm 57 years old. And never one time has God come to me in a big, loud, audible voice and said anything. And I've, I've, I've heard people in the past go, I wish God would speak to me audibly like he did in days past. But God has chosen to communicate with his creation. And he doesn't always have to use the loudest voice to communicate. Matter of fact, Psalms 46.10 says, be still and know that I'm God. Sometimes God will whisper to us. Sometimes God will choose to reveal himself in quiet ways and not in loud, bombastic ways. I believe this, that rather than sometimes God wowing our eyes with the loudness of his voice, he'll reveal himself to the quietness of our ears. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do today. I want you to just lean in a little bit. Not to me. I want you to lean in to the voice of God today. I want you to anticipate God speaking today. I was standing here a few moments ago and I was thinking about this, this and, and, and trying to work our way through this passage today and the message and... I thought, what would be the greatest news you could ever hear? 
And I realize that would be different for each one of us. But just think about for a moment, if you knew that you could come into this place today and you would hear the exact answer you needed to your biggest hurt, hurdle, or struggle. Are you with me? Now, here's how it would work. If you could walk into the place today and you would absolutely hear an audible voice speak the answer, the resolve, whatever it may be to your biggest hurt, hurdle, and struggle, but the speaker would not use a microphone. Matter of fact, the speaker would use a hushed voice. And in order for you to be here to hear him, you'd have to get close. Because you can't hear me on the back row. You can't hear what I'm saying. And if I preach this whole message with this voice, you all will start to listen a little bit. You may start to scoot. Am I right? You want to hear God's voice today? Lean in. Lean in. Pay attention to what God has to say to us because he wants to speak. I believe that you and I are living in loud times. Society is loud right now, isn't it? Everyone seems to be able to have an opinion about everything, and they believe their opinion should be shouted louder than everyone else's opinion. We're living in loud days. And maybe it's easy because of the loudness of the days and sometimes the quietness of God's voice to people, for people to think God isn't really speaking anymore. God isn't really talking anymore. God's not really giving us wisdom and guidance anymore. But I can say this, that there has never been a time in the history of humanity where we've needed you to use such intention, to have such intentionality to hear the voice of God. So today isn't a fill-in message. Today isn't a a stopgap. Today, I believe, is a specific... I can hear, I can't speak. A specific message that God would have for us about paying attention to what He has to say to you and I. Here's the big idea of the message. It's on the handout. It'll be on the screen. That knowing the importance of God's voice... And understanding the loudness of our times, you and I need to intentionally seek to hear from God. Does that make sense? How many of you will agree with me this morning there's an importance, there's an impetus upon us to hear God's voice? Anybody? Sure. How many of you believe that the times are loud in which we live? All the more that we intentionally pay attention. I remember as a kid growing up, if I really got in trouble and my mom or my dad wanted to say something to me that I had to hear, you know what they told me to do? When they were speaking to me, you know what they told me to do? Look at me. I'm like, I can hear you with my ears, not my eyes. If Sue wants to get my attention, she's not slow to go look at me and listen. And I think you and I need to learn how to look and listen. Focus your attention. Anybody in the room have noise-canceling headphones? Anybody ever use these things? I knew you would have noise-canceling headphones. I don't understand these things. I mean, in my mind, if they're noise-canceling, that means you put them on, you can't hear anything. But the thing of it is, is you put them on, you can hear what you want to hear and don't hear what you don't want to hear. It's a really an amazing piece of technology. And noise-canceling headphones, if we wear them properly, they will block out the noise that keeps us from hearing that which is most important. 
And I believe that we have a lot of white noise in our lives today. There's a lot of static in our communication with the Lord and our communication with each other. So how do we eliminate some of the white noise? How do we pay attention? And I'll just tell you this as we start to move into the outline. The problem that we have today is never with God speaking. Your problem and my problem today is never that God is not speaking. The problem that you and I have today is with our hearing. And when we say it's with our hearing, what we really mean with that, it's with our heart. We'll listen to God with our heart more than you will with your ears. So write this down. Point number one. If you want to learn how to hear God today, if you want this art of listening today, then pursuing God, pursuing God is going to be essential to hearing from God. It's not going to happen accidentally. It's not going to happen casually. You and I are going to have to be determined to seek after Him. I've given you a bunch of verses on your, on your worship guide, and there's many more that we could share, but pay attention to a couple of these. In Jeremiah 29, it says, you will seek me, and what's the next phrase? And find me when you search for me with all your heart. That's a good word for us in the room today. You can seek God, and when you do, you will find him if you do what? You search for him with all of your heart. If you will pursue him with intention. Look at the next verse. Now without faith, you've heard this one before, without faith it is impossible to please God since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who seek him. Let me just ask you today, what do the habits of your life look like in seeking and pursuing a relationship with God? Sadly, for many of us, we have sought or we at once pursued, but now we feel as though if we have accepted, if we have believed, then we're okay. I don't know about you all. I, I, hope, I hope you do better at it than I do. Sue and I have had the privilege. We've been married 32, 3, 2, 2 years. We dated for six months, and then uh, she moved away for the summer. And then the week that she moved back to the area, I moved away. So then we dated long distance for a year and a half. We got married, and we just didn't know each other. But I tell you, I hope to spend the rest of my life getting to know this lady better every single day. I hope I get to spend the rest of my days get to, getting to discover what makes this lady tick. And she's complicated. Because I love her with all of my heart. And I don't want our relationship to become static and stagnant and cold and distant. And you know how it keeps growing in a, in a marriage relationship is when you keep pursuing one another. We've been married 32 years, but I still like a good date night. I still like a romantic dinner. I still like time on a couch where we're not saying a word. We just know we're in the presence of each other. Sometimes in our relationship with the Lord, it's really no different. Are you seeking Him? Are you pursuing Him? Are you passionate to know the Lord better today than you did yesterday? Look at Proverbs. It says, I love those who love me and who search for me. They will find me. And then the psalmist said, the Lord looks down from heaven on the human race to see if there's anyone who is wise. How will you know if you're wise today? You'll know if you're wise if you seek him. Are you catching the principle? You go, but life's busy. 
The work we do is busy. We're, we, have, we have hectic schedules. We serve, we teach, we work. We do all of these different things. And it's a time in our culture where we're bombarded with information. I mean, if you want to know anything, you can pick up your phone and Google it and figure out a, a fairly incorrect answer, but you can get near it. But I'm going to tell you, you and I need some noise-canceling headphones that cancel out the noise of this world that allows us to focus and pursue the Almighty in such a way that it changes us. That's what we're after today. So we get over into Hebrews chapter 1. I told you we would get there. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, they're really a fascinating four verses. I'm only giving you the first verse and the first part of the second verse today. I hope you go home and look at it in more detail. The point of this text is this, that God communicates to us today through His Son, Jesus Christ. God talks to you and I today through His Son, Jesus Christ. Now let me show you how we get that. In Hebrews 1.1, it says, Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets and at different times and in different days. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. There was a day, there was a day we have recorded in history, we have recorded in the Word of God, where God spoke through prophets. He spoke through dreams. He spoke through visions. He spoke through angels. He sent messengers. Then there's the time he spoke through the inspiration of 40 authors who penned this book under the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit, spread out over 1,500 years on three different continents, all with the exact same message. God speaks through inspiration. He's spoken through dreams. He's spoken through visions. He's spoken through angels. He's spoken through all of those things. But I want you to see what it said in Hebrews 11, or uh, 1 verse 2. In these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, I don't know about you, but that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Why is it important that we lean in to Jesus being the one to whom God has chosen to communicate to us? Well, it says there, as you, as you continue to look at the passage, you go down and it says, He's spoken to us through the Son. Pick it up in the middle part of verse 2 of chapter 1. God has appointed him the heir of all things, and he made the universe through him. That's a reference to John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Go to verse 3. The Son, this is Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory, the exact impression of His nature, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. And after making purifications for sin, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So He became superior to the angels, just as the name He inherited is more excellent than theirs. Just write this down somewhere. Jesus is better. It's better that God chose to communicate to us through Jesus because Jesus is better. I don't need an angel. I have Jesus. Amen. You get that this morning? Oh, I wish God would just send me an angel. No, you don't. No, you don't. It'll scare you. You don't need an angel. You have the second person of the Trinity. You have the only Son of God who left heaven according to Philippians 2 and took on humanity and drew near to you and I so that we could have relations with him, relationship with him and hear him in such a way that when we hear Jesus, we hear God. When we hear what Jesus has to say, we've heard everything that God has to say. I don't need a prophet. I don't need an angel. I don't need a messenger. Because I have the Word of God. And in the beginning, isn't that what we said? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was 
God. How many of you today believe in Jesus? Talk to me, church. How many of you believe in Jesus? You got everything you need. You've got the voice of God right here among us. Jesus is better because he's the exact communication of God. God sends himself to talk to us through his only son. Write this reference down. I didn't give it on the handout or the slide, but write it down. Colossians 2.9. We looked at this back in the fall. It says, in him or in Jesus, all the fullness of the, dwell, of the deity dwells in bodily form. Jesus said in John chapter 14, he says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And here's what Jesus is saying. If you hear me, you've heard the Father. If you experience me, you experience the Father. If you connect with me, you connect with the Father. If you relate to me, you relate to the Father. Back in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 2 and 4, it says he's the heir of all things. That means he's sovereign. There's nothing, there's nothing, say the word nothing with me, there's nothing where Jesus isn't a part of it Amen. and where he's not greater than. He's sovereign over all things. I don't need another voice, do you? I don't need another voice. I have Jesus. It says he's the maker of all things. You know what I love about that? If Jesus is the maker of all things, then he knows how it works. I don't know how this life works. In this life, Scripture says you will have troubles and trials. Anybody in the room agree with that verse? Amen. In this life, you will have troubles and trials. And then he goes on to say, but do not fear, for I have overcome the world. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who's in you? Jesus. This is an amazing truth for you and I to understand that when God chose to speak to you and I today, he chooses to do so through communicating through Jesus, his son, who's the exact imprint of his nature, who upholds the universe with his word and his power, who is superior to the angels. I tell you absolutely, Jesus is better. So write this little, write it down somewhere. It's not on your notes, just jot it down. You have to focus to be able to hear. You have to focus to be able to hear. And some of you are going, preacher, I learned that in elementary school. That isn't very deep. That isn't very, very strong. That's, that's pretty, pretty shallow stuff. And can I just let you in on a little secret about preaching? Most of preaching is not telling you something you don't know. It's telling you what you already know, but we're not doing. Catch it. This old boy doesn't have an original thought in his head. Nothing new under the sun. I have nothing to preach other than what the gospel has given me to preach. And there have been men for centuries who have gone ahead of me to preach it far better and explain it far better than I ever will. But the method of preaching is not to try to impress you with some big idea and new thought. The method of preaching, according to Scripture, is to remind you and I what Jesus has already said and call you and I into obedience to practice it. That's what we're here to do. So if you want to connect with Jesus, if you want to hear from God, it's going to take some real intentionality. And here's the third point that I give us today. God communicates to us through his son, but he connects with us through the word of God and prayer. That's the platform. If you want to connect with God today, if you want to hear from God today, it's going to come through the Word of God and from prayer. And again, some of you are going, not new, heard it all my life, supposed to be in the Bible, supposed to be praying. And again, don't ask yourself if it's new, ask yourself if you're obedient. 
Don't ask if it's something I've never heard before. Ask if it's what I'm practicing now. Are you in the Word of God? Are you taking this book and understanding that it is both biblical history, it is, it is history in and of itself, it tells of all future events that point to Jesus Christ or whom God communicates with us with. And here's what I believe, and this is worth writing down. I don't know where I got this. I should write this better than I do. But reading the written Word of God will lead you and I to know the living Word of God. Let me say it again. Reading the written Word will help you and I know the living Word. Scripture tells us that Jesus is the living Word of God. It's the, the embodiment of the Word. And the more that you and I read this, the better we know Him. That makes sense, doesn't it? My fear is, my concern is, that many of us don't know Him well because we don't read this well. We go, I don't understand it. It's too hard to read. It feels too old. I'm not trained to be able to study the Bible. Can I tell you, every one of those excuses, listen to me, every one of those excuses is white noise. It's static on the line. It's not a clear signal. And the lack of clarity in the signal is never coming from God's voice. He has written it and he has given it so that you and I could know him, that we could worship him, that we could be loved by him, that we could serve him, that we can be forgiven by him and redeemed by him and given hope through him. He doesn't make this complicated and he doesn't make it veiled. He simply says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll do what? I'll give you rest. Seek me and you will what? You'll find me. This is not rocket science. This is basic relationship that the more I study, the more I'll get to know. And here's what I love about the Word of God. When I study the Word of God, it informs my prayer to God. I get people all the time go, I don't know how to read the Bible. Well, we can help you with that. And then they'll go, well, I don't know how to pray. Well, we can help you with that too. If you really want to learn how to have a passionate, authentic, deep prayer life with God, get into the book. And the more you know this, the easier it is to talk to Him. But I guarantee it. I'll guarantee it. If you're struggling in prayer, it's because you're struggling in reading. It's true. George Mueller, one of my favorite heroes of the faith, led an orphanage in Bristol and a great man of faith, man of God. And there's a longer exposition that he gave onto this topic about the relationship of the Word of God in prayer, but to condense it, he said, I saw the most important thing that I had to do was give myself to the reading of the Word of God and to meditate on it so that my heart might be comforted and encouraged and warned and reproved and instructed, and that while meditating, my heart might be brought into an experiential communion with God. Growing up, we had a friend of ours. His name was John Caldwell. He was a traveling evangelist. John was, John was about this tall, it seemed like. And he was about that wide. He could preach like no one I ever heard in my life, couldn't he? 
And he had that great ability. I always wish I had this. He could be preaching, just going at it and break out into song right in the middle of it. And he had the most beautiful voice. But what I loved about John Caldwell more than anything else was when he took time to pray. And I, it hushed me. You ever been in the presence of someone when they start to pray, you just go, oof, this person spends time with the Father. His prayer life marked me. I'll never forget the prayers of John Caldwell. I used to think I could never pray that way. I used to think that was maybe a special gift that God gave to, to others, that God had, had given that to people, but not to me. But here's the reality. That man and others, and many of you in this room, you know how to pray today, because you spent time in this book. Not because someone taught you the these and the thous and the those and the right wording and the great phraseology and how to put words together. It has nothing to do with it. Do you know him today? You got to get in this book. And here's what I love about it. The more we study him in this book, it changes the way we communicate to him. Now we can talk with our heart and now we can share openly. And maybe the last point I give you today that helps and then a point of application. If we really want to hear God's voice, I submit to you today that it has much more to do with your heart than it does your ears. A whole lot more to do with your heart than it does your ears. It says in Psalm for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and we are the sheep under his care. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. I'm going to give you three simple questions to ask. When you go to this book, which is the way God communicates to you and I, which is the way that he is going to connect our relationship together is through the Word of God and through prayer. When you come to this book, I'm going to ask you to ask three questions. Practice this. Question number one. God, what is it that you are revealing about yourself to me? Is that a good question? Whatever passage, Lord, what, what are you revealing about you to me in this passage? And here's what I want you to do. Wait and listen. Matter of fact, lean in a little bit. Just lean in like, like he's really going to answer. Pay attention. Second question. God, what do you want to change in my life? Some of us are going, I don't mind the first question. What are you revealing about God? But I really don't want to have to go to that next stage. But the psalmist did, didn't he? Search me and try me and see if there be any wicked way within me. This is the right approach, God. What do you want to change within me? And then, God, what are you calling me to do? What is, what is it you're asking me to do? How do I become obedient today? I wish I had this down well in my life. I'm a sojourner with you all. Anybody else feel like sometimes in your spiritual life you're three steps forward and two steps back? Anybody else feel uh, the struggle? Because the Christian life gets so daily, doesn't it? But I want to keep pursuing him. So go back to your Bibles, and I understand the time. But go back to your Bibles. I want you to go back to Hebrews chapter 1. And here's how I wrote this out this morning. This was my time at about 5.30. Let me give you the text. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets at different times and in different days or different ways. In these last days, He spoke to us by His Son, 
God has appointed him the heir of over all things and made the universe through him. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact impression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. And after making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And so he became superior to all the angels, just as the name that he inherited is more excellent than theirs. And as I read that passage today, I asked the three questions, what God are you revealing? What do you want to change? And what are you calling me to do? This may not be for, you, for anybody else. It is for me today. As way of example, here's how I prayed this passage back to the Lord this morning. God in heaven, I thank you for the passage that you are a God that listens and a God that speaks. Thank you for sending your son because without Jesus, I wouldn't know you. Thank you for sending your best and that all of life is operated and sustained by you, God. That means that my life today is loved and sustained by you. Thank you. Thank you that Christ has rescued and saved me. And Lord, I really want to know him better. I feel this morning as though I don't know him well enough. I may know him academically, but I want to know him with all of my heart. So God, today, would you help me to know Jesus? And God, if Jesus is your communication to me, I want to be Jesus' communication to the world. So if you'll change me, I would love to be a bright and impactful person for the kingdom. God, would you help me do that today? Amen. Two words to wrap up today's message. Lean in. Lean in. Don't try to hear him from a distance. Don't try to walk with him from a faraway land. Act as though the very best news you're ever going to hear is being spoken today. Look. Listen. And watch God speak. Thank you that your voice is not quiet today. Thank you that your voice is not absent today. God in heaven, we thank you that your voice is stable and secure and always present. Thank you that you speak in a known language to us through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that we can know who you are, God, because of your son. And thank you that we can be obedient to what you've asked us to do because of your written word. Father, would you do the amazing work of gathering every one of us under conviction to study and to know you, to relate to you, and to be faithful to you. Unleash the gospel through this church, in this community, in this state, and around the world. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen.